All right. Hello, members, and welcome to the Echo Team Podcast. I'm your host, Tim, and with me today is... Hey, guys. I'm Skybane Zero, one of the managers of 100K Strong, and I am the co-host of this podcast. Hey, I'm Ryan King. I do various things backstage, and still I have no idea why I'm here. <laughs> oh, come on. You explained that in the last whatever podcast uh, you were on. Come on. It, uh, it's funny. And with us today is our very special guest... Is that me? <laughs> yeah. Am I the special well, guest? Well, 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 I was thinking Ryan, but... Yeah, uh, well, we'll... Really? Think. Oh, no. sorry. All right, well, you now, know, and... Returning special guest. I'm not special. <laughs> <laughs> You're fine. <special> to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, seriously, back on track. All right, All right uh, and with us today is our special guest. I'm Rob Man. Um... For those who don't know, I am a co-host on the Happy Console Gamer Show on YouTube. Uh, I have uh, guested a lot with the All Gen Gamers. I am a ridiculously passionate Mega Man fan, and uh, I'm looking forward to having a really good chat about Legends and uh, to getting Legends 3 back, because, damn it, we deserve it, and we want it. <laughs> Woo! All right, so, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll start talking about the... Like, I'm sure I saw the post from uh, before, but we'll talk about the anniversary from the cancellation, and... Uh, you know, we all have our stances, we all know what it is, but uh, Rob, what, what was your initial reaction overall just when you heard Legends 3 was cancelled? Well, w let me take you in the Wayback Machine with Peabody and Sherman, and uh, we're right. going to travel back to the, the horrible evening when I found out. And amazingly, um, I was sitting playing with my kids, and my wife, uh, was, we were all hanging out, and my cell phone goes off, and I pick it up, and it's a text from Johnny, uh, Johnny Millennium, Happy Console Gamer, saying, oh, oh dude, I can't believe they cancelled Legends 3. And I kind of was like, oh, yeah, he's messing with me. And I figured I'd get up and just check the internet and just have a quick peek. And my, my stomach just, I just, oh, I felt sick. Like, just felt like my heart fell right out of my chest. It was the most horrible feeling. Um, mm -hmm. I, I had been given a, a 3DS for my birthday at exorbitant cost for that game because my birthday was uh, the, is, is May 30th. So it was right before the e-store was supposed to launch at the beginning of June with the prototype version and I was just I haven't really bought a game for it since it sits there derelict because that was the only game I wanted and the, the second I found that out I just th there was anger and there was there was sadness mm -hmm. because it was the well and my wife as well I mean she she loved the first two games I've played through both of them she watched while I played through was totally invested in the story and of all the games that Capcom could turn their back on it just seemed like the the biggest heartbreak for them to just turn around and drop that one after so long of the fans begging and wanting it and after so long of people fighting hard to get it and then with all of us trying so hard to help it become an amazing game so that was yeah. that was my first reaction it was just one of almost betrayal to be honest yeah i read that blog post you made on day was cancelled it was i could almost feel your pain through that message it was just very heart inspired well i, I... Capcom is one of the most amazing companies out there, or has the potential to be. They have been the, the leader of the 90s. I mean, when it came to gaming, when it came to arcade action, when it came to devotion to the fans, in the 90s, Capcom was it. They, it, they personified all of it. And starting with when, uh, you know, when Clover Studios shut down, the loss of uh, Shinji, and, and then Inafune leaving... It all started to crumble, and it started to fall apart, and, and be it a combination of fear over whether or not the game could live up to what it should with Inafune not at the helm, whether it was, um, uh, you know, a move of stubbornness and bitterness over the fact that he left, whatever the reasoning that they cancelled that game, to me, that was the final nail in, in the coffin, as that blog post stated, yeah. uh, that, you know what, I've had enough, I've tried to support you, I've tried to stay positive, I've tried to love you for all of the memories but sometimes memories aren't enough, and at this point, they they took away the one shining ray that, to me, was was their redemption after all of this. Was their their proof that no matter what, when the chips went down, there they were for the fans because they were going to still make this one game that we had fought so hard to get, and then they took it away. And I couldn't stand for them anymore. I could not, in good conscience, back them any longer. As soon as they did that. Right, right. Mm. So that's, uh, that's how yeah, I, I felt. That's a little sad. Mm -hmm. 
do you, do you honestly think that let let's just say for the sake of argument that uh, if there was no movement that would they ever do you honestly believe with the state they are in now would ever eventually get down to Legends Three whether it took like a couple years or such? Okay, now now I'm gonna put a disclaimer in here, and this is to help you guys out. The views and opinions expressed by Rob Man on this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of 100,000 strong of any of their upper management or of any of the other fans of this franchise. Be that understood now. <laughs> okay. Alrighty. Capcom Japan, the Japanese business in general, is based very strongly around saving face and, and, and around how you are perceived and around honor, things like this, okay? They will not rescind this. They will not turn around and change their mind again because to them it's a matter of honor. They have put their foot down and stated they are not making this game. That's it. They are old school Japanese businessmen. They have made up their mind. And until such time as those old duffers get the frig off the throne, we're not likely to see it happen. Mm. I'm sorry to say it that way, and I know it's heartbreaking, but the truth is they they are now at a point where it's a matter of saving face. It's not about what the fans want. It's not about what we deserve. It's about saving face for them, as shallow and sad as that is. Yeah, I can, I, and I can completely understand where you're coming from, because Japanese businessmen are like that. As sad as it is, they, they're just, they just care so much about their reputations and stuff like that, that they just, you know, they can't even imagine doing something like that. They don't even think about it. Well, because to them, it would be admitting they could make a mistake. Yeah, exactly. And and if you start doing that, you show weakness, and then your business mm -hmm. crumbles. That's how they feel. Um, and it's unfortunate. Even, yeah, because even actually in truth, bringing the game back might actually restore some of the reputation. Well, they've, they've really, and I hate to say it, but they've done a number on themselves of late. I mean, there's only so many Resident Evil games and fighting game clones you can shove up somebody's orifices before they start to realize that, well... Have you guys lost all of that spark? Like, is, is it gone now? Has the Shimmer left? Because, I, believe me, I, I used to love my Marvel vs. Capcom. I love my Street Fighter games. They're, they're lovely. But <laughs> there's only so far you can take that before people start to realize you've rehashed the same thing into a sausage with a bit of different flavoring in it so mm -hmm. many times. I mean, Resident Evil 6 is supposed to be fantastic, but there's how many, like, 87, 88 Resident Evil games they released all at once there? I mean, you know... Wikipedia! <laughs> yeah, it's just... It's, it's unnecessary. But they're treading comfortable ground because all they have right now to work with after being rocked so heavily by all of their top creative talent leaving is the names of their franchises to try and see them through. And Mega Man, without Inafune there... Which, let's travel back to that interview he did just after he left. Yeah. In a, in a way, he almost threatened them, saying mm. that he felt that the next Mega Man game would be a failure, and it would be because he wasn't there to helm it. So they nipped that in the bud by just canceling all of the Mega Man games and making sure they couldn't have them be failures. Mm. Uh, that is very unfortunate. But uh, I love Inafune, what, what he's saying now about how, you know, the Japan needs to admit its failures and all that, and that yes, they are kind of failing at not, at the point. Uh, I start, I'm starting to see more and more kind of what he means. The more I see, like whether it's Capcom or you know Square Enix or such and such, um, it, it's just uh, he's definitely trying to help them, but you know you have to be a little critical at times, right? Well, exactly, and and the bottom line is. His message was of passionate game making. It wasn't about money. It wasn't about dollars. Those will come if you get a group of passionate, dedicated people to work on the games with their soul. And that's what he wanted. And if you'll notice, mm -hmm. uh, Capcom started dwindling when, when the creative teams left. When uh, Hironobu Sakaguchi left Square, all the, uh, the creator of Final Fantasy, all of a sudden their games started being not quite so wonderful. Like, these, these key players left, and what did they do? They formed companies of their own where they could be passionate and make the games they wanted to make. Now, you look at Lost Odyssey. That was the next Final Fantasy, thank you. And that was made by the creator of the series. You know, these, these guys, uh, Shinji uh, Mikami left, and he made Vanquish, 
which is a, a cover-based shooter, but his next project is going to be a survival horror game, and this is the man that brought us Resident Evil. That game that he's making is going to scare the other love and poop out of people, and it is going to be a gorgeous opus of a masterpiece, because he's passionate about those games. He's passionate about what he's making. He's not doing it because we make money when we slap this label on a game. And those guys, if you watch, their studios will flourish. When, when Comcept starts releasing games, I'm going to be there throwing my money at it. I don't care if it's uh, uh, Nobunaga's Ambition kind of a game or if it's going to be uh, what it is. They will get my money because I know it's a passionately made game that is going to be very worth the money. Exactly. And I'm right with you there. I plan on supporting Comcept to the fullest of my extent. Now, th this is where things are going to start getting interesting, though. I, I managed to pick up a little game called Solato Robo, Red the Hunter. Did any ah, of you guys bother? Yes. I've been trying to get it, but I've heard it's, it's a very good game. I've, I've played a little bit of the beginning, but the, the pedigree of this game and the vintage of this game gives us, <laughs> yeah, no pun intended, pedigree, uh, gives <laughs> us something to think about. Uh, the first game that this company made was called Tail Concerto, and it came out on the yeah. PS1. And it was mm -hmm. heavily flavored with Mega Man Legends. Uh, it was it was about cats and dogs, uh, anthropomorphic cats and dogs. Uh, yeah. But it, it had the, the walking armor and a lot of the graphical style, a lot of the gameplay was a lot like Tron and the Gastro Shaft. So it was a very legends -y flavored game. And they wanted to make a follow-up to it for oh, how long? And they, they fought for it, they fought Around for it, they fought years. for it. Pardon? Around 10 years, I was just saying. Yes, and then they managed to get clearance to do Red the Hunter, which, although not a true sequel, is a spiritual successor and set in the same world. Now, these yeah. guys were crazy about Legends, and CyberConnect then went on to make Asylum's Wrath with Capcom as a co-production, which... Um, unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be winning any rave reviews, doesn't seem to be doing well as a, a financial success, but it, it, it is very much a, a cult-following fan favorite. But these guys openly stated they want to do Legends 3. Now, Inafune has openly stated that he would like to tip his hat in the ring and help finish it, although he is no longer with them. Uh, CyberConnect couldn't be a better company for this because they understand the... Uh, wanting to, to see a dream through. They understand wanting to spend a decade reviving something. And I think that, honestly, in their hands, the game could flourish. But, it, again, it's all going to fall down to Capcom. they got to open up and let it happen. Yeah. Now, I want to know, how did you guys react when you heard the news? Of the cancellation? Yes. <sighs> oh, my God. When I read that, it was pretty much about an hour after it was announced, my... And I think my brother was on the computer at the time. I asked him if I could borrow it for a minute to check the dev room stuff, because I checked the dev room several times a day at that time. But, yeah, I popped on at that time, and when I read that, I just kept saying to myself, this is a joke. Wait, are you serious? This is a joke. This is a joke. <laughs> and then after I went through that segment, I kept saying to myself, man, I mean, I could never see that happening. Would people... Over at GameFAQs, GameFAQs, if you've been there, it's just the biggest bunch of cynics there you can ever imagine on the internet. They were, they were always saying this game's going to be cancelled, this game's going to be cancelled, and I was just saying to myself that this, this cannot be cancelled. Capcom, even though they've made some mistakes in the past, they know that if they cancel this game, they're going to tick off so many fans that it's just going to put them in such a horrible light. No one's going to support them again. So that's why, in my mind, the cancellation of Legends 3 just seemed impossible to me. I didn't think a company could be that careless of its fans. But, so that's why it surprised me so much when I read this thing, and, you know, the, the news of the cancellation, I was just so shocked. And after about a half hour after the shock had went, worn through, I just, I actually predicted this outcome of the fans uniting together, forming a movement in order to get this game back. I expected petitions, I expected all that stuff, and, you know, I expected it to be big, which, of course, it is big to this day. And, so, yeah, I can't say that this, I can easily say this whole thing was hugely unexpected to me. I expected, I didn't even expect it to be possible, this cancellation, but it just well, floored so many people. 
Well, for my reaction, like, generally speaking, I'm pretty laid back, you know, even with Capcom doing some of the stuff they did now, or vice versa, and such and such. Um, I, you know, when I heard about Legends being made, I was like, oh, that's cool, I'd pick it up for the 3DS, because I was going to buy a 3DS um, regardless, because I just knew, it, I just felt it was going to be a cool system, plus mm -hmm. I thought the 3D gimmick was pretty cool for what it was. But when I heard about the cancellation, I'm just like, I was, I was disappointed. And I, generally speaking, because at the time, you know, I'm like, oh, that, that sucks. <laughs> uh, when I started, uh, I got into these little arguments because I, I picked up Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. You know, and I got into arguments with these people. They were just not even, like, any sense in it. Just, they were, like... <laughs> Bitch, bitching at other people for buying it and they're just like dude it, to us you, yeah it's, it's just a game but and then like, going on the the dev room because uh, Nate, Nathan Lindley posted the thing and I, I looked at him like yeah I'll sign up and then I started seeing like uh, you know there was Sky there was Laurent all, the, all these people and you know they seemed more level headed than most of the other stuff <laughs> I've been hearing and I'm just like you know I, I'm not the biggest Legends fan but I am a huge uh, Mega Man fan so I was like, yeah, I'll join in, and then, you know, from one thing led to another, and then, you know, we decide on, hey, let's do a podcast, and we just got picked up by Backstage, and I, 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 I don't regret, like, as much as the cancellation sucks, I enjoy all these things I've been doing in the past while, and, uh, yeah, you know, I, I really hope it comes back, too, if not, you know, just for me, you know, for the, for the rest of the fan base, right? <laughs> But th that's just me. Like I said, I'm probably, when it comes to games, I'm just really, you know, I, I love video games. I love it so much. But, uh, you know, when your parents beat into you, it's like, dude, it's, <laughs> my, it's, it's a game. That, that's how my dad always talked. And it's like, yeah, but, you know, it has a lot of passion, a lot of heart into it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And even me, Legend is not my favorite series. I'm telling you guys that now. My favorite series is Mega Man Zero. But I've always been a Mega Man fan. As long as I've been playing games, I've always been a Mega Man fan. And supporting something like this, when Mega Man Legends 3 was announced, I felt that it was sort of my dedication to, you know, support another f Mega Man fan base because I've been a Mega Man fan so long. I've been playing, I played pretty much all, no, I played, played all the Mega Man series and pretty much all the games back then. Mega Man Legends, this Mega Man series was pretty much the only, the only games I played, so... I sort of felt it was my dedication to assist an, another Mega Man because, you know, as the saying went on back then, around the time the movement was formed, no Mega Man should get left behind. And Mega Man Legends was the, the black sheep of the Mega Man series, so, but he had a lot of heart, so I thought it should not be left behind because the creators put so much work into this. And, you know, they put a lot of heart into the series. Mega Man Legends 3 had... I just felt so bad for the developers, too, that they put so much work into the Mega Man Legends 3 that it all had to, be go, had to go to waste because the executives did not want that thing to be put out, and they thought it would not be a good investment. And, uh, Ryan? Yeah? What was your initial reaction? Uh, pretty much just amalgamation of what you all said. It's just shock and my heart just slowly melting into a viscous puddle of goo, <laughs> almost. <laughs> There's a joke I can make out of that, but I'm not going to. And then just somehow or another, I found the page, and things just escalated from there. I posted the G4 video, I was brought onto here, and wouldn't you know it, I'm going to be representing us at our second convention, but we'll get to that later. <laughs> now, I have to admit something, and uh, I know I've said it a, a couple of times before, but Ryan there is the reason that I'm a member of the movement myself. I oh. personally, I took the bitterness route, and I created a little picture for my profile that was uh, a picture of a crying serve bot, and it said, Legends die when they are killed. Uh, uh. Partly as a joke, but uh, he saw that and reposted it, saying, the biggest Mega Man fan I know put this up today. Uh, my, my heart is broken. And it kind of, I, I went to Johnny about it, and I said, well, Johnny, like, look, look at this. And he said, well, don't you understand that people, people listen to what you say, people care. And it's going to change how they feel. And to me, that was just stupid. So I was like, I'm just some bald dude that plays Nintendo who, who gives a crap what <laughs> I think. Um, but it, it really it really sort of shook me. And, and Ryan's passion about this shook me. And it really made me sort of think about it. And I looked at the group, and I, I joined right away. And it made me turn around my attitude on this whole thing in that, 
you know, if, if, if Operation Rainfall can do everything it's done, and they have done, they have got the games they wanted yeah. brought over. They've had them localized. Now, Nintendo is a slightly more open-minded company, <laughs> but <laughs> they well, did it. two out of three of them so far, but... Well, and but the bottom line is it, it there is progress there, yes? And, and this yeah. is a very, very passionate fan base. Legends fans mm -hmm. have waited. They waited a decade for this to happen, and now they're still fighting, even though it's been cancelled, because... I mean, I remember uh, Milkman, James Milky, from uh, OneUp.com. He used to be, uh, I believe, a writer for EGM and all that. I remember finding an old interview between him and uh, Inafune way back where he asked, okay, as a final question, and it was out of left field because everyone else had forgotten Legends at this point. He said, how much would it cost? Yeah, how much would it cost for us to finance? Remember that one? I do. I do. Oh, I remember seeing that, yeah. And how long ago was that? And, and Inafune tossed out this number. You know, everyone said, well, we should try and save it up. God damn, why didn't we have Kickstarter back then? But uh, <laughs> it, it, it still, at that point, the fans were passionate. And, and, and there were even fans of this series that were that passionate that were a part of the journalism and media surrounding these games. And so they're still here. And it took a slap in the face to kind of wake me up and remind me that, yes, I do need to be positive And I do need to try and do something good for this instead of just sitting back and whining and crying about it. And so, Ryan, I owe you, and thank you so much for bringing me back from the brink and uh, reminding me what the priorities should be. No problem. <laughs> and that's what this movement's all about. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say that. It seems like pretty much the main reason why most of us joined is because of the passion that, like, the fan base kind of motivated us to partake in this, in these events. Well, Mega Man fans have been a passionate bunch for a long time, and we... Yeah. I, I mean, from from the first classic series to the X series, uh, and then there was there was for quite a while a lull, and we got we we did get the Battle Network series and the Zero series. Um, mm -hmm. I'm I'm not personally most passionate about the Battle Network series, but it was there. But it there wasn't really a, a true Mega Man uh, and the Legends, of course. But there wasn't really a true Mega Man feeling Mega Man to me for a long time until uh, the eight bit Renaissance got started, and we can we can attribute that one to Inafune and Mega Man Nine. Really, uh, yeah. that was the first major r retro revival game to be put into production, and I remember all the press surrounding it. And he really did old school gamers like me a favor by making those style of games hip and cool again. And that was where Mega Man fans kind of shook the dust off and came back out of the woodwork and were like, "Hey, wait, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah." Now, hey, hang on, we have a right to be proud of, of what we're a fan of. Because for a long time, Mega Man fans were kind of like, oh yeah, you still like that old game? Uh, it's the same thing every friggin' time. But, screw that. No, it's not. We love our games. And we're some of the most passionate gamers out there because we've loved these games with people saying that for over 25 years now. So, we, we are passionate. We are strong. And I think that uh, of the game fan bases out there, I think the Mega Man fans are some of them, have some of the most heart and some of the most strength. For us to keep going even after this well i think some of the reason i think there is some reasonable reason for why people were complaining about the 8-bit stuff because it just seemed like capcom was getting a little bit lazy with mega man at that point with the 8-bit stuff i mean sure mega man 9 was fine mega man 9 was great it was revival of a uh, something that you know hadn't been put to use for a long time but then when, Me when mega man 10 came along it just seemed like they were just getting lazy with the stuff they didn't want to put much money into mega man well, I, I actually, uh, I was reading, uh, I forget where I found out about it, but I was reading this interview, uh, a bit off topic, but Chris Seaver, the guy who made Conker's Bad Fur Day, uh, he, he summed up how I feel game companies should should be, because he was talking about Nintendo, because mm -hmm. people were saying, oh, well, Nintendo's going to get replaced, and he said, the one great thing about Nintendo is they make games they want to make, they take as long as they want, and, you know, and the games that come out usually are great. And I, that's kind of how, especially Capcom in the 90s, that's how it was. Cause yeah. They, you know, they made, they made Mega Man, they made Phoenix, Phoenix Wright, Resident Evil, and it, it became, they all have their dedicated fan base. Mm -hmm. Well, that's how it should be. You know, developers should spend as much time as they want with the project, and they should focus on the quality. Well, and this is, this is what Inafune's message to the Japanese market was. Uh, passion people love the game don't work on it because you know you get a big paycheck at the end of it whether yeah. it sells or not that's that's not the point you have mm -hmm. to you have to love this medium and and a lot of business 
um, gets run by profit margins these days. I've really yeah. seen a dehumanization of, of corporate structure. And it, I know they're out to make profit. That's what a business is for. But there's a difference between something that was crafted with care, attention, and love as opposed to something that was made to be a cash grab. Exactly. Yeah. Well, well, a lot of it too because, you know, it's like uh, the art of video games because the video games, they're supposed to be engaging and especially stuff from the 90s, they were like some of the most, I can think of like the top 10 most memorable moments I've had playing these games. But... The problem is, you know, like you said, the the business aspect doesn't see it that way. They're, they're just like, oh, well, we, we got to focus on profit. If it makes profit, generally, it must be good. It's it's kind of a back and forth sort of thing, too. Like, marketing's good, but you should always prioritize, like, making, you know, making the game as good as it can be. Yeah. Well, now, you, you have to remember also that we are, or at least I am, I know, and a lot of us are of the pedigree of... Uh, Old, old school gamers, we made this industry what it is because we were doing this before it was cool, not to sound like a friggin' stinking hipster, but <laughs> when I was in school and I was playing Nintendo, it was not cool. You did not talk about it or you got wedgied, you got beat up, and you got laughed at. Nintendo right. was something that was spoken of in hushed corners over a copy of Nintendo Power hidden inside a Playboy magazine. Like, you, That's right. you know, you <laughs> traded secrets with your friends, like trading notes in class <laughs> about where the warp zone was or how you found the extra one-ups. Like, this was this was not mainstream stuff. This was stuff of a subculture, and it was really that in the shadows for a lot of the time. And all of a sudden, with the dawning of the year 2000, the era of the nerd arrived, and all of a sudden we could come out of the shadows, the dust could be shaken off, video gaming was acceptable in the social norm, but unfortunately, with that came the cash gamer. And oh, now, oh. we find the Battle of Modern Warfare Duty FPS Douchebag McTeabag is a top-selling, top-grossing number one... Okay, there was a Guinness Book of World Records for what video game has the greatest ending of all time, and Ghost Recon won. It was Black Ops. Sorry, thank you. But, I mean... FPS of your choice. Excuse me, but they had the most voters, didn't they? Because they were the most popular amongst the average John Q gamer. So we are no longer the target demographic. So when they think business, they think, what can we churn out with mass appeal that will make us an ever-loving F-ton of money? And so average first-person shooter war-based games uh, are amongst the top list, whereas games like Mega Man Legends that had it been released back in the 90s when this was a subculture would have been a massive seller amongst the niche market that played these games. Nowadays, it won't be as much of a drop in the bucket uh, as far as the, the, the big shots are concerned because it's not going to hit those target markets of soccer moms, grandparents with a Wii, or, uh, you know, Joe College Beer Swiller who wants to yo you know, one shot, kill a headshot, and then teabag the corpse. And the one guy who kept panting in the locker room. Y yeah, exactly. <laughs> the guys who have, you know, uh, hairlines that start at their eyebrows and knuckles that drag on the floor. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I'm on my soapbox. My wife is telling me to get off my soapbox. Uh, <laughs> I, I will rant and I will be proud of it, damn it. Um, Do not rile the anger. <laughs> Oh, that was not a bit nice. You have made me very angry. <laughs> so that's 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 the unfortunate, sad truth. Is that nowadays uh, it is a profit margin. Um, now, should they actually come around and release this thing with all of the notoriety and the attention it's got, I think they'll make themselves a nice square chunk of coin. Let's face it: when Nintendo or when Capcom needs to start making some money, what do they do? They churn out a bunch of Mega Man merch. Yeah. <laughs> Mm. How many of us have seen all of the keychain straps, the e can drinks, the wallets that they're making now, all of these little merchandise things, the figures, uh, the very nice D Arts figures, by the way. Quick plug for them. But the cell phone games. Yeah, they 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 crank out anything Mega Man that's either a rehash of their 8-bit games or that is merchandise that'll tug at our heartstrings, but they still refuse to actually continue the IP, and they keep saying, "Oh, well, in December." In December, we're going to renounce something about Mega Man for his 25th anniversary. But right now, we're focusing on Street Fighter. Oh, really, are you? That's a shock. 
That's, that's a terrible shot, because you're going to give yourself one month of the 25th anniversary year to come up with something. Thank you, ever so kindly, for sparing the time uh, for the original mascot of your company. So, let's, 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 let's Capcom, come on, let's, let's show some love. A little bit. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Just... Okay, so we're going to ask, uh, we got the 10 questions from the 100,000 strong, so uh, we're going to start uh, with this one. So this one comes from AJ Ryan. Now, is this for all of us? Uh, th this is strictly for you, Rob. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, um, a lot of these questions, I think only two of them are addressed to us. <laughs> it, it's actually a two-part question. So it's, what is your least favorite 2D platforming Mega Man game and why? And also, what is your favorite spinoff outside of uh, Legends? Okay. Um, least favorite of the 2D platformers, I, I, you know, Mega Man 8. And I know, I know, it gets a lot of flack. But let's be honest. Um, the, the animation was beautiful, but it didn't feel like a classic Mega Man series game to me. The, the muted pastel-y colors uh, were one problem. Uh, Clown Man. I really don't think I need to expand on that one. Clown Man. Uh, <laughs> You know, uh, and that little voice clip, see you in my dreams. No, thank you. Uh, and finally, the the ice stage with the jump, jump, slide, jump, slide, slide, jump, 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 that Johnny Millennium bugs me about to this day, may I add. Um, it just, it was more of a frustration than it was of a, a Mega Man feeling game. Like, I know there's normally a challenge, but that one really created a lot of controller splintering agony. Uh, so... That would be my least favorite. Um, now, my most favorite spin-off. I mean, well, I'm guessing that means that basically the, the, the classic series is considered the core, and then anything that followed is considered a spin-off? I think so. Uh, well, I, I think he's addressing it as uh, more of what is your favorite uh, Mega Man besides Legends. So, Oh, well, uh, um, Obviously, the classic series is right up at the top. I mean, my, my favorite video game of all time, all time, is Mega Man 2. It was, to me, the most pure, most pure form of the Mega Man franchise. And maybe because I've played it so much. Uh, I mean, the, the, the first time I played it was a rental from a video store. I didn't know it was out. I saw it there, and uh, I think I was the only kid in the world that managed to make flaming bike tire prints on the way back home. I was moving so fast. <laughs> The guy at the shop counter, I, I, like, I brought up the boxes, can you, can you hold this for me until I can get the money to rent it? No, nah, we don't hold things, kid. And so I had to hope I got back in time to rent it before some other kid grabbed it. And I just, on my bike and, <laughs> gone. <laughs> Flaming wheels all the way back through my neighborhood to my house. In the front door, I ran for my parents. They were like throwing money at me so I'd go away. I'm like, <laughs> in the store, ran back up and money in the guy's face before he could put it back on the shelf. <laughs> Took that thing home, finished it overnight, and then played through it about three more times before I returned it. Like, it was <laughs> such awesome. The music, the graphics, the characters, the all of it was just such an amazing thing. I played it so much, my parents set up uh, a small TV in the dining room so that I'd leave their TV alone. Oh my god! <laughs> like it, it was just, it was like crack for me. I just, I, I stayed up all bloody night. I think I got two hours of sleep and I didn't care. Uh, <laughs> So, so to me, the, the classic series is, of course, uh, my, my absolute favorite. But if it has to be a non-classic X uh, game, I really enjoyed, amazingly enough, Mega Man ZX. ZX? The first one. Not Advent. Yeah. Just, oh, I know. That game was awesome. It was so... I don't know. I mean, I, I, I picked it up, and it brought back the platforming. It had enough RPG mm -hmm. elements to spice it up. It had a little bit of the flavor of Mega Man Zero, which was in and of itself a gorgeous series. But there was something about it that just really snared me. Now, Advent unfortunately lost it uh, for me. But but the first ZX was just purely bu brilliant to me. Yeah, that is a fantastic game. And I hope that if Capcom decides to... On the slim chance that they do try to revive the Mega Man series, I hope that they make a ZX3. That's that game. I'm pushing for that. Even, well, okay, probably not more than Legend 3, but around that, you know, can, can, level. Can we just ask that they go back to the biometal that just sort of augments the main character instead of turning you into other animals? Yeah. Because <laughs> that, that, that yeah. part of Advent did nothing for me. 
I think they could have made a lot of interesting biometals, like, uh, what's his name, El Pizzo, they could have done him, and Kraft. I think they could have made a good biometal out of Kraft from Mega Man Zero. I think they had a lot of potential, I think. Yeah, but but in, 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 in Advent, you just turned into whatever enemy you had destroyed. I know. As opposed yeah. to in ZX, where you you defeated this massive boss and took that piece of biometal, but then it just changed the way your main character looked and gave them the aspects of its powers. That was so much cooler. Mm -hmm. And to me, more more Mega Man feeling. Exactly. Yeah. So that's, that's my answer to that question. Alrighty. And for your next question, this comes from Joel Hatting. Are you are you excited for the Mega Man and Sonic crossover comic? Okay. Uh, I got back into comic book collecting with the new 52, but a part of that was also insisting that every variant cover of the Mega Man comic be delivered to my sweaty little hands. Uh, the idea of a Mega Man Sonic crossover? Yes, because it's one of the most not thought of possibilities. I mean, obviously because Archie owns them both, they're going to do that with, as a video game crossover but what a brilliant idea that no one would have thought of i mean to, to put the blue bomber and uh and and blue lightning together is just unbelievable no i can't wait to see how this plays out because now robotnik and wily are obviously going to get along but mega man's a robot sonic's used to fighting him it's going to be uh it's going to be interesting to see and uh, let's hope can we all just say that you know nerd squeal moment can we see if Quick Man and Sonic can have a little foot race here? <laughs> so badass. Actually, Tim, I think that was addressed to all of us because he's writing, "Are you guys excited for the Mega Man and Sonic crossover?" Oh, uh, short answer: Yes, absolutely. That's all I can say. Okay. Because because I think Rob just summed mm -hmm. it up best, like. You know, especially when uh, you, you grew up with seeing Sonic and uh, Mega Man, but it's like, you know, no one would ever thought Mario and Sonic would be, like, in a game together to fight each other and stuff like that, and then along comes the new uh, Super Smash Brothers Brawl, and you finally get the opportunity. That's the sort of feeling I get from it. Yeah, I think I'm the differing opinion here. I don't really like crossovers between two gen different generations. I mean, universes, they just seem weird to me, but... I'm happy for everyone else who's happy for it. <laughs> well, I I, th I think it has a lot uh, because people know to expect Capcom with different uh, crossovers, whether it's with SNK or if it's with, you know, Marvel. Mm. But uh, mm. still. Yeah, I just think just... it seems kind of weird because Sonic's an animal and it doesn't look like he'd fit into the Mega Man universe and stuff like that. Just seems to oh. kind of ruin the atmosphere of Mega Man to me. I don't know. Well, Mega and Man X bosses were traditionally animals. I mean, if it was X in there, he'd probably be trying to shoot the bugger. <laughs> well, that's a good point. That works. Especially if it was Mecha Sonic. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Ryan? Yeah? You excited for the new uh, Mega Man Sonic crossover? Well, I'm honestly not too much of a big of a fan of comics. I, yeah, it is pretty exciting. Maybe I'll give it a read. <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll start with the next question. This one's from Mira San. Uh, Sky, feel free to add anything you'd like. Sure. Uh, do you think Capcom will sell the rights of Mega Man to either Integrates? What? Integrates. Integrates. Yeah. They're, the They're the ones who made Mega Man Zero and Mega Man ZX. Nine. Oh, or or Concept or whichever company you know put up the best offer. Well. He's he's basically asking, do you see that as a, a possibility? No, not at all, because they can still make too much money off the name Mega Man. They may not make games that are showing you respect for the series, but it's still a cash cow to them, so they can crank out all that merchandise and take all of our nice money uh, while not actually having to make or, or put any effort into creating games of those series. Uh, I, I do understand that uh, although it's fairly under wraps right now, the new Smash Brothers is heavily rumored to actually have Mega Man in it this time, which would be fantastic, but again, is a sign of Capcom finding a way to, on the sly, get money out of the name without actually having right. to work. So, no, I don't think they'll ever sell the rights to Mega Man back to Inafune, although that would be intelligent. 
uh, or to into Creates, who basically made the last several generations of, of Mega Man games. I know, right? Uh, no, they're, they're going to sit on it like a dragon on its horde. Mm. For a fourth question uh, from Aaron Ryu, what one thing stands out to you the most in Mega Man Legends series that makes makes you endear it so much? My guess is he's a, he's asking uh, like, what, what's your favorite things about Legends and why it's so endearing, and why the fan base is uh, very committed. I think because it was, in essence, you could see Mega Man in it. You could feel that Mega Man was a part of it, but it was such a different experience to have created an open, no, almost open world run around action RPG, uh, to have created such an engrossing story and to have created such an in-depth world. And, and to have had all of the nods to the Mega Man series without it being what all the fans used to complain about or the non-fans used to complain about, where it was the same thing again. There are eight robot masters. You have to defeat them all to stop Dr. Wily from... <laughs> it was fresh. It was different. It was, it was so friggin' cool. It was all in 3D. Oh, man! Uh, it had the cel-shading anime look that was sort of on the forefront of that coming coming to its uh, popularity. And I think that the fans really attached and gravitated towards it because the story was so good, because the characters were so likable, and, and because they managed to put a fair amount of mystery and intrigue into it and keep it that way. So, honestly, I think it, it was... Had it not had the Mega Man name on it, it still would have been a stellarly popular series but giving the allusions to one of their flagship franchises at the same time and giving it the name Mega Man just made it that much better. Yeah. For my last question, uh, this is from Jonathan Sotelo. Rob Man, who would win in a fight, you or Johnny Millennium? <laughs> <laughs> my, my, my wife would like to weigh in on that one, but uh, <laughs> to be, on <laughs> to be honest wish. with you... Um, I don't, I, I don't think it, it could ever actually happen, but, but were it ever to actually come down to that, we would have to settle it uh, like gentlemen. We, I would say with a Street Fighter battle, but he would shellack me so badly that I'd never be able to show my face in public again, because he does every time we play. We'd bring it to Super Bomberman 2, in which case, it's a close fight, but I'd just have to say that if it's going to be a Bomberman battle, I, I, I'd take him. But he's <laughs> listening, if he's listening right now, which I know you are, you're telling me that's absolute BS and that you're going to take me downtown to Chinatown? And that's fine, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, uh, we, are, we, are, we are intending someday to, to live stream or whatever our Bomberman battles. I introduced him to Super Bomberman 2 on the Super NES. I have it with the multi-tap still. And we our, our battles were legend because we would turn off the timer, no golden bomber, no added bonuses, nothing. We would last half an hour, 45 minutes on a single screen, running around in circles trying to drop bombs on each other and trick each other, talking the dirtiest smack. You have like, We have a sense of humor that is so beyond the rest of humanity uh, that, that, honestly, I'm not sure the world should hear what we have to say at times. <laughs> um, but if you've watched the outtake videos, you, you know somewhat what I'm talking about. Uh, it, would be, it would be glorious. <laughs> Uh, Sky, uh, yeah. go ahead with your uh, questions. The remaining ones. Yep. Um, okay, this one's from Jonathan Taylor. If Capcom were to renounce Mega Man's return as an FPS, would you be okay with it? I believe that anything from any type of media that involves a gun should at least try an FPS game. That's a difficult one to say. Uh, I will say this. Um, handled right, like the uh, Metroid Prime trilogy was, I think that a Mega Man FPS were it its own distinct world, or at least done more along the lines of a Legends game as opposed to a classic Mega Man, could be very interesting and very unique. I think it could be very cool, handled properly. Mm. Um, again, uh, calling to mind the transition from Metroid to Metroid Prime. Um, so I would, I would be hopeful, and I would, I would look forward to it with a positive view, but I would also be very afraid of how, how terribly wrong it could go. Yeah. But I would hope I would hope that they would do something along the lines of, of Prime. So, mm. well, uh, th well, before you say anything, uh, there's actually I uh, there was this Quake mod, but 
they took basically oh. all the original eight robot masters. Yeah, the Mega Man Death Mega Mask. Man. Oh yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. That's it. But uh, you know, obviously it was just Quake with Mega Man. But still, you know, if it was something like that, I, you know, Mega Man fan. I, I'm a huge Mega Man fan, so I. Fuck, I spent sixty bucks right off the bat. You know, something like that. If they were to, even if they were to do it like an Xbox Live Arcade game where it was like a say a nice cell shaded rendered version of that of course a man i'm in yeah. because that's that's just fun and that way you can get online with your friends and with the rest of the mega man community and you can have that fps experience so yeah i'd, I'd definitely give that a roll all right next question this one's from nathan lindley hi nathan what things were you looking the most forward to seeing in legends 3 Okay, first of all, the the um, the prototype version looked very very exciting. Um, I was so excited to see all the fan generated content that was coming into that, because there's no better way to really excite people than to let them see their own creations come to life in a game series that they love this much. Mm -hmm. uh, and finally, the real time, uh, the the bottom screen having the real time weapon and equipment changes during battles. They, they showed a quick demo of that on one of the videos that ended up being released of the, the three guys that were sitting there playing the prototype version, uh, yeah. Japanese video of it. Mm -hmm. The idea of being able to, you know, just use your stylus and quickly tap a weapon and change over, can you think? I mean, even the battle against Juno, if you could have been able to just real-time on the fly swap up your weapons for the most, you know, the, the most appropriate weapon in that situation, like, now? Oh, God, how awesome is that? How much easier would that have been? So I was so excited to see those things. And, and the idea of a new set of diggers, because we were only really used to the Bonds uh, as, as sort of the uh, bad guys and and uh, Mega Man role and, and, and her grandfather, right? So yeah. to see a different group of diggers, but ones that are, you know, dedicated to, uh, from what I understood, bringing Mega Man back or being a part of that. Oh, how awesome would that have been as well? So really, there there were a lot of good things going for this, but those are those are right at the top. Yeah, exactly. All right, next question. This one's from Carlos Felix. There are a number of lines of dialogue in the Mega Man Legends games that have gained a sort of immortality these days. Which specific line stands out to you, and why? Um. <laughs> uh, well, that kind of ties in a bit with what he said earlier about how it's been a while since you know. You know what? Uh, there, there, there were a few. Uh, okay. although honestly, it's it's Babu. Babu <laughs> wanted, he only ever said Babu. <laughs> nah, nah. Because when you see a hulking brute that huge, he goes Babu. You just go, uh, excuse me. What is the third bus did you fall off of, buddy? Like what? You can't talk like that. You can't look like this. Not like that. <laughs> Not yeah, all right. So uh, that that was definitely one of them, and I think that uh, for me the 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 moment when if you play the game right, uh, Mega Man can walk in on roll after she's gotten out of the shower. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. That's just see that was just classic because that's just again Capcom having fun with their own property and making fun of it. So um, there's well, a lot not, of not the... magazines around here. I'd love to read them, but there are people <laughs> around. <laughs> well, it, it it also ties in with uh, especially '90s anime because that almost all the animes I watch have that sort of scene where you walk in and it's like, oh, you're getting dressed, oh, uh, silly me. Yeah. Or or where they walk in and they do that traditional stereotypical oh, sound and then the big nosebleed pops out <laughs> and they turn all embarrassed. <laughs> and the girls like Tee -hee 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 -hee, giggle, bounce, bounce. Yeah. <laughs> Punch, fly, twinkle. Oh, an anime in the 90s. Plastic Little did it right. Uh, if you're old enough to remember that one, you're old like me. Uh, sh sh I'd have to think about that one, actually. Um, anyways, but... Uh, oh, and of course, uh, yeah, the, the getting money for recycling the cans. <laughs> right. I think I paid for several of my weapons that way. <laughs> I was I was bloody diligent. I got it down to the point uh, once where I could actually walk it in three kicks, have that thing making me money. Yeah. <laughs> My wife remembers me money grinding that way. I used to farm Zenny. Just out, kick it in, bing, 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 money, out, in, bing, 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 money, out, in, bing, bing, bing. She was like, oh my god, how long are you doing this? Oh, hours. 
I only need 98,000 Zenny more so I can upgrade my driller. That's how a lot of people grinded back then. <laughs> uh, next question. This one's from Nurul Amen. I think it's pronounced. <laughs> I... uh, it might be. It might be. I mean, I'm not sure. But uh, okay. So if we mispron, well, if we mispronounced your name, we're very sorry. Yeah. Okay. This one's from Nurul Amin. What do you think the 25th anniversary is going to consist of this Christmas? Well, a lot of people don't trust Capcom these days, but just run, but just wondering. Well, they've announced plans for a pretty awesome-looking Ecan soundtrack set, which, to be honest, I know I'm going to buy anyway. But I don't know. See, this is this is where we're in unknown territory because mm -hmm. they're either go they're going to do one or two things. Either it's going to be so amazingly underwhelming that the rest of us are all going to roll our eyes. You're going to hear that wah, wah sound effect, and we're all going to move on. Yeah. Or they're going to absolutely land based and blindside us with this thing because nobody expects anything from them. Because let's be honest, at this point nobody does. So they pull it out and they actually manage to do something just gobsmackingly amazing. We're all going to be amazed, we're all going to be very happy, and that could give them a little tiny taste of redemption right there. But it's going to have to be something huge. Um, so I'm not talking about, oh look, a new set of keychains. Ah! And they have a number 25 on them somewhere. Ah! No. Or an 8-bit Mega Man 11. Oh. They'll, say tw they'll say 25, but really small print. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, oh, <laughs> look, a new line of Ecan energy drinks with slightly more weird flavor. No. Uh, <laughs> they're going to need to do something big. I mean, I want to see something yeah. like, uh, let's see, a, a new Mega Man X series game in the 16-bit style. Reporting Mega Man soccer to the iPhone. <laughs> okay, I didn't ask for another punch in the nuts. <laughs> at uh, this point, I will take a Mega Man Soccer 2 at this point. I would I would be happy to see a, a, a Mega Man X revival. I think that uh, done 16-bit done style, because uh, for all the folks that say, oh, this is just like the Mega Man 8-bit thing. Yeah, but the 16-bit Mega Man X games were friggin' amazing. So, you know. Well, see, I don't know about that. I don't know if that would be enough to get fans to trust Capcom again, because even oh. then... That seems pretty lazy. I mean, 16-bit has, I think, has worn out its time. And well, we're, no, it, we're in the new generation now. Now, hang on. you got to think who they're talking to. 16-bit yeah. is worn out maybe for yourself, but if you don't mind my asking, what age bracket are you falling into? I'm old, and we're the original gamers. And unfortunately, yeah. we're the guys with the most disposable income right now, and we're the guys that are nostalgic about this stuff. So when it comes to 8 and 16-bit, why do you think Mega Man 10 and 9 did so well? Because us old farts still eat that stuff up with a spoon and straw. So if they make a 16-bit one, the younger gamers may not appreciate it as much, but all us old farts are going to be right there in line just begging for more. So I think that it would be a smart move. Will it make fans trust Capcom again? No. The only uh, thing at this point that is going to make any of us trust them again is if they either sell the rights to Legends 3 to Comcept or uh, CyberConnect or Integrates, or if they resume making this game. Outside of that, there's not much they can do to really appease us. They can try and sell us more merch, which they're still doing, but they can't placate us and make us trust them again without reinstating this game. Well, here's where I'm coming from. I mean, okay... We are in a new generation, and not all fan, fan gamers are pretty spoiled these days, and they will not pretty much not play anything that's new. I mean, sure, old people will buy 16-bit stuff. People who are old gamers, people who are who grew up with that stuff, but Mega Man will not live off that. I mean, these people aren't going to be going on forever since they're already this old. No offense, Rob. No offense. But they won't keep going on forever, and there's going to be a new generation of gamers coming in constantly, and that is not enough to keep Mega Man going for another 25 years or so. It'll be good for the, for the time, but bringing in a new generation of gamers, you have to impress them in order to do that. Well, the thing is, before we get into that, uh, the, I, the problem is, it's a lot of, it has to do with the whole, you know, graphics, you know, kind of help make the game. They can, but, you know, realistically, it's like, you know, 16-bit, you know, it still had great graphics for what it's worth. Like, um, uh, I was watching, uh, what was it, Clan of the Grey Wolf, and he was showing a clock tower for the Super Nintendo, and I, there was times where I'm just like, 
for a Super Nintendo game, it's pretty, uh, you know, pretty freaky. It's that sort of thing. Plus, you know, remember the 8-bit with uh, Sweet Home, where, and I've seen some of the, like, the scene where there's, spoiler, there's a scene where a guy is basically melting, and I'm just like, to make that out of, especially with the limitations of the Nintendo, it's like, it's good for what it was. It, I, I wouldn't think something like that needs and, a sort of graf, graphical update. And let's also remember that we are talking about the 25th anniversary, which that will harken yeah. back to the origins of the series. I'm not saying that a 16-bit revival is going to continue the series for 25 years. That wasn't what the question was. A 16-bit revival of this series, uh, of the X series, as an anniversary nod, is a brilliant maneuver. No, no nothing is going to... Uh, for a new generation of gamers, you're right. They're not going to want to see 16-bit sprites. This is a nod to the anniversary of the series and to the guys who were there when it started. When you want to talk about getting new gamers into it, yeah, they're going to have to do something different. And I don't think all these handheld titles that they've been making are going to cut it either. I think that if you want to get the new gamers in, they are going to have to try and find a new way... Uh, be it, uh, honestly, a, a Legend-style game uh, done on the newer consoles with the full capability of them would have been nice because it would have looked gorgeous and would have been mind-blowing. But if they were to do even uh, 2D hand-drawn style Mega Man platformers but done with animation that looks like a, a walking, living, breathing anime, that's your new future. So that's pleasing the 2D fans while maintaining, play, uh, pleasing all of the new school fans. Because if you can make, uh, I don't know if you guys have seen footage of uh, Level 5's new game that they did with Studio Ghibli, uh, Nino Kuni. Oh, yeah, yeah that and, is, I'm so now, now, now picture that. a Mega Man game that looks like that. <laughs> picture a Mega Man game that looks like that. Are you telling me that new fans wouldn't be interested in that? Oh. Hmm, not exactly. Well, no, the, it's... Uh, See, so that, for that's... New it. fans? Go ahead. Uh, well, new fans, like that sort of thing, absolutely, that will definitely... Yeah. yeah. Because, look, it's it's so appealing to the eyes, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's... So, I mean, if you want to talk about what's going to bring new fans to this series, you need, you do... Yes, you're right. You do need to move with the times, update the graphics, keep enough of the old school to keep the older guys interested and to keep the sort of how it's connected to the series there. Definitely move on. But, but for the anniversary, I would definitely say that... Uh, if they're not going to bring back Legends 3, then then, reinst then reinstating a 16-bit Mega Man X would be another good step in the right direction. Yeah. Okay, next question. Uh, the, this is I more... believe this is actually... Uh, I believe this is actually the last question, so... Uh, yeah, okay, last... Sorry, sorry for interrupting, though, but... Okay, sorry. Um, yeah, last question, and this is sort of more addressed to the administrators of 100K and the moderators and stuff. Um, why didn't you guys attend at San Diego Comic Con 2012? In my theory, that'll be a tr that'll be a true landmark of your success for 100K Strong. Okay, to t truth be told, it was a combination of both time and money, really. More the latter than the former, though. To be honest, we weren't even considering it for months, purely because nobody was putting the bug in our ear, so to speak. It was only in the months leading into San Diego Comic-Con when we began to consider it because people on the wall were finally starting to say things like, hey, why don't you guys appear at San Diego Comic-Con this year? And by then, of course, it was too late. You know, they were all booked up. I, I personally went over to San Diego Comic-Con's Facebook page to ask if there was any room left, I think, in the months leading into it. But it wasn't really... It was pretty close into it, but... Some guy addressed me, and he pretty much just laughed me off. Of course they're out. <laughs> you know, it's the big convention. Not everyone can get in. <laughs> and, right. you know, it was a little embarrassing, but, yeah. So, right. if you guys want us to appear at a big convention in the future, you're going to have to give us, like, I don't know, four or five months' notice. Because while we don't always have the funds to fund a big convention like that, eh, we can possibly do it given the time if you guys are willing to help us. Would you go on our behalf, Rob? <laughs> You're talking to a guy who has uh, a wife and two kids and a full-time job. Uh, I don't really get the kind of funding in or the time off to be able to go off to SDCC. I went to PAX once. I've been there once, and that was a really big treat for me. As much as I'd love to, uh, I, don't, I don't think it would be feasible. Uh, plus the fact that, well, uh, of, of late... Part of why my time has been a little bit crazy, and I know you guys have been sort of trying to get a hold of me for a while. Uh, yeah. I just bought a house. 
<laughs> so uh, I'm gonna be moving soon, and uh, yeah, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty damn sweet. It's uh, a nice big house for my growing family. Uh, so probably won't be affording trips to San Diego for a while. However, uh, <laughs> w- once I'm back on my feet, hell yeah, I'd love to go and represent the group. Because let's face it, 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 I would hope that you guys would be wanting to be representing at almost any major get together of uh, comic geek and gaming culture. Because it's it's an excellent way to to get more word out there. I mean, people who don't mm-hmm. know about Hundred Thousand Strong by now, they should. You guys have yeah. been doing such an amazing job. You've been all over Facebook. You've been on the community. You've been on the dev room. You've been everywhere. And honestly, guys, uh, a big round of applause to you guys. And, and thank you so much for all the hard work you've done trying to get people to, to show their support for this series. <laughs> well, thanks. Thanks. Thank you. But, uh, well, actually, off topic for a bit, but they actually had a, a very first Comic-Con in... Uh, in my hometown, it's in Ottawa, which is the capital of like of all of Canada. Yeah, so oh yeah. Ottawa, it was like, it was. They said it for like 800 people, right? It was like at most they were expecting about 800, mm-hmm. and it was almost triple that number. Like, uh, like for a first time event only, and plus, you know, we it was one of the funnest things I've ever been to, and I would I would love to go to San Diego. And now uh, do the same thing because it was just amazing. Yeah, and it's just like it's just I've been saying for a while now. Ever since we hit 100k likes on Facebook, one of one of the things I really want to focus on now that we've achieved 100 likes on face 100k likes on Facebook is public promotion because we have something we can brag about, so to speak. And you know, I think as Rob said, we really should be. Get, getting more people to know about us, you know, and the dedication we're putting into this project that, that is, truth be told, this is going to go into gaming history. This is something that people are going to be talking about for years. <laughs> you know, you know the, it's a piece you know, of gaming history. Well, there's the movement for Earthbound, but we're going to succeed. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see Earthbound come out sometime, too. I mean, there's uh, a lot of us that would love to see that, but honestly, I think that what you guys have been able to achieve, uh, and in as short a time as it's been, is nothing short of miraculous. Uh, to, to get the 100,000 likes uh, in less than a year, and to, to keep the promotion going, to keep people interested, to keep them devoted to this, and to keep showing them that there is hope as long as people are willing to put in the effort and the time and to show Capcom, we're not going away, we're not sitting down, we're not taking it, you're bringing back the damn game. Exactly, and it's also the fun you get, you know, doing these things. Like, you know, some people are very pessimistic about, you know, the weapons contest, but then, you know, it started picking up right away, and, you know, people were having fun with it, and there was the prize at the end. And it's that sort of thing that's kind of defining what the whole fan movement is and what it stands for. The fact that you guys have been able to continue the dev room has also been a huge help. And Capcom of America, let's get this out there as well, have been very instrumental in keeping this going and it has been very helpful in every way possible because I know they've taken Mm -hmm. a whole lot of flack over this but it's not their decision and they're doing everything they can to support it because they believe in this too so for all the folks out there that are angry and that are mad and that are sending a lot of that negativity towards Capcom of America guys remember they're on our side they are helping they kept that dev room open when all the rest of them around the world got shut down so yeah and yeah and at New York Comic Con you know they wanted to do an interview with us they came right to us Seth Keelian came right to us for an interview he wanted to interview us we did not even ask him for that you know I, I'm talking about our uh appearance out there last year Yeah I remember it I remember it well I mean mm-hmm. these are these are all signs that that Capcom outside of Japan wants this, sees the, the merit of it, and sees the strength of what you guys have created. It's seen that the 100,000 Strong brand is a strong brand name, that you guys are, are making notoriety and headway. And it's really just going to come up against uh, Japan. They can't do much internally from Capcom USA either because it all is up to those guys at the top and whether or not they're willing to eat crow and, and admit that they may have been wrong about this and, and are willing to show their respect for the fans that have made their company as great as it is. 
but plus there is you know they're not as open in Capcom Japan, but there is the people that are saying but you know we we'd love we'd still love to see this project go through. But at the end of the day, you know it's those those top businessmen that are making those you know I, I'm gonna say poor decision because you know I <laughs> we all believe it's a a bad decision. So yeah. mm-hmm. now Inafune also groomed up a very strong team before he left, and he sort of kept them on the DL. He kept them you know. Don't make too many waves, but they followed his vision. They followed his way of doing things. They and did. they're still in there, and they're in some key places. So that's the other thing. There are people in there that are waiting, that are biding their time to turn things around because they remember what Capcom was and what it can be again. So mm-hmm. hold strong, friends. It'll happen. And the prototype is just sitting on that shelf. <laughs> oh, it's Collecting waiting for us. And that's, that's the other heartbreaker because that right mm-hmm. there, it was ready. Oh, Capcom. Why? Who's gonna organize the uh, the ninja-like evening strike to free that from their grasp and set it loose on the gamers as they deserve? <laughs> I know, right? I'm like, about as oh, graceful as an eagle piloting a blimp, but I'd like to do that. You know what? Um, what's his um, F- Freddie Wong, the guy who does uh, video game high school? Yeah. He did oh, a yeah. video uh, breaking into EA to to release spoilers, and he said that. He wants people to vote on what his next break-in should be. We should all go over there and put this break into Capcom and release the prototype version. Doing that now. <laughs> that would be friggin' brilliant. Oh, God. Freddy, Freddy, if you can hear me, uh, help me, Freddy Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. <laughs> uh, that's hilarious. Uh, <laughs> Well, no, originally, uh, also, you know, I always thought, you know, doing, like, a little animation for the movement would have been good, too. Like, you know, nothing like a whole bleeding heart sort of thing, but more of a, like, a funny, you know, there's Meg Man stuck on, the like, the real-life Earth moon and just waiting there, raking rocks, whatever, and just saying, come on, guys, help me. But, uh, you know, I'm fi- finding, the, finding an animator for that, that... So even just even just a picture of Walnut standing there on the moon, holding up a cardboard sign that says "Earth or Bust" with his thumb out like he's hitchhiking. <laughs> All right, I'm looking at the Freddie Wong video right now. Just as a side note, and the two top comments are for Activision and Valve. Gabe Newell cannot hold Half Life free from us any longer. Okay, that I agree with, but still, I would love to see him do a, a run for Legends Three. Yeah. Uh, to get the prototype version released from Japan. Uh, even just for the, the, the shits and giggles of it, that would be amazing. Well, before anything else, uh, I just want to talk just for general of it. But, uh, yeah, like I was talking to Sky, you know, I picked up Ashura's Wrath. I picked up Okami mm-hmm. for the Wii. And, uh, you know... It, it, it's definitely when you play it, you kind of understand what people mean when it's like there's a certain passion to it. Yeah, yeah. You should have picked up Okami for the PS2 though. Just saying. Ah, well, I, I, I PS3 soon, so. Well, yeah, that's well, true. That that's one of the few games where I can say an HD release is deserved because there's so much art into it. You know, I'm, I I haven't beaten it yet, but you know, I'm having fun with you know. What I'm playing, and it's it's mm. art art, and it's and you know I'm gonna no nah, I'm not an artsy type guy, but it, if I had to say what art in its purest form is, I'd say Okami is right up there. I managed, at least oh, I managed to get my hands on the art book for that game, and oh man, yes, it is gorgeous. Which which, which I feel also assures Wrath. Like I said, this is strictly speaking uh, Capcom. Assures Wrath has. Uh, it, like it's just so over the top. It's anime style. It's just so much movement going on in colors. It's it's pure eye candy. You know the gameplay might be a bit lacking. I'm not gonna say it's perfect, but it's for what it's worth. It's definitely worth at least you know renting. You have to give it a full playthrough. But, uh, oh god! I also heard about uh, that Steel Battalion being unresponsive. Uh... Which which I, I'm looking. I'm like. It, you know, it's it's sad because you know you, it 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 could have had potential like most games it it, could, it had the potential but it just 
that one fatal flaw and you know it could have had like, the potential it, if you know they had actually released a controller for it exactly <laughs> i mean i have a connect and well voice chat works fine i haven't tried the motion stuff in a while but <sighs> god i actually tried that out at a convention it did not work it did not work did not work <laughs> Or, uh, well, no, how, I was seeing the video of it, uh, what was it, it was two best friends play, you know, me and my brother were watching, we were just laughing our ass off, because, you know, yeah, it's n not only is it really unresponsive, but it looks really, uh, just like when the hands are just moving around there, and it's like, okay, what the hell's going on? That, and plus, you know, those two make me laugh, so... <laughs> You know, I personally think they should have, because uh, there used to be a lot of uh, noise being made about the fact that they released this massive controller for the Xbox version. It was uh, just, you know, way over the top. It's two huge joysticks and all the instrumentation and the pedals with it. You know what? No, forget that. Don't don't make it connect. Make the whole robot. Make the whole <laughs> mech suit. You know what? When you buy this thing, it ships in a crate that's the size of a large garage because it has the mech inside. You actually have to pilot the effing mech. Why, why be skin thin? Why be cheesy? You know, just do do the real thing. Then people can actually stomp around oh, the their neighborhood and blow shit up with missiles. Come on, Capcom. And the potential's there. And then millions of dollars worth of property damage and lawsuits occurred. Absolutely. The ultimate super elite collector's edition that came with an actual functioning war mech. And it's only $800 <laughs> billion. Everyone can afford that if they pre-order a GameStop now and get their free download code for one extra <laughs> missile. So... Do it today. <laughs> At least it'd be better than the Resident Evil 6 Collector's Edition. Oh, God. Wh wh which one? The one on the PS3 that has half of the games, or the one on the Xbox that has the other half? <laughs> no, the one that has the fake pleather jacket. Oh, God, are you kidding $1,300, my aching nutsack. And it's pleather? I'm guessing it is. I would hope that for that it would be real leather, because otherwise... Leather jackets no. are not worth that much. I can go well, get a nice leather jacket down to the J.C. Penny for a few hundred. Yeah, but, a, you know, a custom-made video game-styled one, I could see them doing that. But yeah, not I if it's going to be pleather, if it's going to be fake leather. Jesus. I have no hmm. idea what it's made out of. It could be made out of the broken hopes and dreams of Mega Man fans, for all I care. <laughs> I do re I do remember they released the uh, biker jacket from uh, Dead Rising 2. Oh, uh, the IG Quan. And those I ones went friggin' fast. It was only a few months ago that I finally realized, oh wait, IG backwards is KG. <laughs> <laughs> and my Damn. friend actually uh, pointed that out to me and I was just like, oh my, oh, I am an idiot. Hey, well, my, my wife was the one that found out that if you look at the cover of Resident Evil Zero... For the GameCube, you know Billy standing there with his big tribal tattoo down his arm? Yep. Turn the box sideways and read it. It says Mother Love. <laughs> tattoo says Mother Love. Uh, uh, I have got to check that out right now. Thank you, Capcom. I love you. Because <laughs> <laughs> she, she was looking at it. She said, this is Mother Love. And I was like, it does not. Stop distracting me and play the game. She said, it says Mother Love. And I was like, it doesn't. She turned the box sideways. I glanced down and went, oh my god. Mother That's exactly how she said it. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> but I did not know about the KG backwards. That's friggin' amazing. Well, I'm not alone then. No, I, I didn't know that. No, I love that though. I'm still not gonna buy uh, Dead Rising Two either because man, those 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 time limits just. Uh, yeah. I, mean, no. I played off the record at PAX, and you know it was fun smashing zombies over the head with a table, but still. You have to pay money for cheat codes. That is yeah. where I draw the line. See, Actually, I just, before that's where I draw the line. You've just crossed it. I wanted the open world. I wanted them to do basically GTA, but killing zombies. That's my perfect game. That is my, my perfect game. Take Dead Rising, remove uh, the plot, and uh, r remove the time limits. Uh, and now you get to run around a shopping mall, picking up blenders and jamming them down zombies' throats. Woo! <laughs> and the Mega Man ping pong ball gun because that was just so funny when you picked it up going oh yeah and it went and the little ball bounced off them and you kind of went oh I'm screwed <laughs> and 87 <laughs> zombies disembowel you uh, stay back I'll use it I'm not kidding I'm going to do it again now <laughs> I'm wearing it down 
Okay, damage. Yes. Okay, uh, Jim, you have to wrap this up someday. Uh, I don't know. I'm having so much fun right now. Okay, we can uh, we can continue the discussion. After okay. The podcast. Okay. Uh- And, uh, is there anything else which you, you would like to add? Um, yeah, as always, if you guys have any ideas for promotional events or contest ideas for 100k strong, drop us a message on Facebook. If you're looking at the main page, the admin message box, it or the admin messaging button is right under Mega Man Volant's foot, so it's not too hard to do. And, of course, join the dev room, and the servbot system's down, so you can't get a servbot number currently, but, yeah, join the dev room, uh, Go to our page, like the page, and go to legends3.com. It's our main hub, and it tells you everything you you can do for the movement. And remember, guys, legends never die! die!